the silicon lottery. You may have heard this term before, particularly regarding CPU and GPU overclocking limits. But what exactly does it mean? Well, when you go out and buy a brand new CPU, for example, Intel's i7-7700K, you are essentially playing the silicon lottery whether you know it or not. That is, the performance potential of the particular processor that you chose is different compared to the one sitting right next to it on the same shelf. Some of the processors may be able to achieve a stable clock speed of 5.2 GHz, whereas others may struggle to hit 4.9. So, how exactly can two of the same processors with the exact same product SKU have different overclocking potential and overall performance? Firstly, we have to understand how a CPU is manufactured, so let's take a look. The first step starts by melting sand, which is composed mostly of silicon dioxide into a pure silicon cylinder. The silicon is then cut into what are called wafers, which are essentially a large silicon disc. The wafer is then applied with a photosensitive chemical that reacts with UV light to form the transistor layout of hundreds of CPU dyes. This layout is then washed, etched, and then doped with other elements resulting in the electrically conductive silicon to finally form billions of transistors on each CPU die. To give you a sense of scale, Intel's 7th generation processors operate on the 14 nanometer process, which refers to the width of the silicon fins that pass through the transistor's gate. Now, a single silicon atom is 0.2 nanometers thick, which means that the width of one of these fins in a 14 nanometer process is only 70 atoms across. These logic gates are then connected by extremely thin copper traces in multiple layers, and at this point, the silicon wafer now consists of hundreds of CPU dies. After these connections are tested, each CPU die is cut out and placed onto a PCB that interfaces with the motherboard in your PC. Stick on a heat spreader, and the CPU is ready to go. But, go where exactly? Well, what exactly the CPU is packaged and sold as really depends on how well it performs. The performance varies from chip to chip due to very slight differences in material quality across the silicon wafer, and also across other stages of manufacturing. Remember, we are talking about the atomic scale here, so even slight material differences can lead to large performance differences, and this ultimately determines the processor's fate. For example, a quad-core processor which has one or two cores that aren't functioning correctly may just have those cores permanently disabled and then be sold as a dual-core processor. This makes for a more efficient manufacturing process as nothing has to be wasted or melted down. This process of sorting chips depending on how well they perform is known as binning. This also means that processors within the same product name won't have the same performance potential, but this is really only noticeable if you are buying an unlocked processor and intend on overclocking it, as only then will you reveal that particular chip's limit. And that right there is the silicon lottery. By purchasing an unlocked CPU, you know at the very least that that processor is good enough not to be binned at its lower tier, but exactly just how much it made the cut by, you don't know. Now, I know I've explained how this works with CPUs, but this applies to GPUs as well. This is why you'll see the same company offer up to three versions of the same GPU. Essentially, all three boards were manufactured exactly the same, but were binned according to how they perform. And again, even boards within the same product SKU will have slight differences between them on how far they can overclock or naturally boost to. So, whether these differences matter is entirely up to you. For the most part, how well your CPU or GPU overclocks will most likely fall among a normal distribution, which means that more often than not, you'll fall in the middle of the bell curve and have pretty typical performance. And even if you're on the tail ends of the distribution, you're probably looking at the very most a valid 100 MHz difference for the chip's potential. I really haven't seen more than that. I say valid because most of the time when consumers complain about losing the silicon lottery, the results can be explained by their system and cooling configuration. So, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Thanks again and catch you in the next one.